Welcome back everybody. It is great to have y'all here. It's been a while since we've had an RDC video and um, that was intentional. I don't, I didn't work on it over the holidays. I took a break from it and um, it was nice. It was good. I got a lot of work done around the property that needed to get done. I hung out with the fam and just chilled out. So the RDC, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, I feel a little over, I feel a little burned out on it. The only thing that's really driving me forward is the fact that I just cannot wait to take my kids camping in this thing and my family and my wife. Uh, I just keep thinking about the springtime and summer where we're going to go on this. So I have to push through, I have to get this thing done. I have to muster up some motivation. This little thing here, this is the KT lock. These are the seventies era lock, 70 to 77. This is one of those unforeseen parts of the project that I would have thought never would have caused so much grief. Uh, this right here and the window visors are the two things that are, that have been the biggest challenge for me on this build. Window visors are still yet to be figured out. This though is fixed and you're going to see how I did it in this video. It took a lot of effort, a lot of frustration, a lot of mistakes. Um, and I can see why now people just take these off and throw them in the garbage and put on like a deadbolt or just a regular thing. These are really expensive to replace to buy new. I'm not even sure if you can. Um, it's like eight or $900. I think I found one on eBay that was rebuilt for like 750 or 800. I took it upon myself to take it apart and I found parts for it. Fortunately, the only thing you really can't replace on these is the cylinder lock. And I was lucky enough to be able to make my original work. I actually tried making a new cylinder lock work that I ordered from out of doors Mart and I couldn't make it work. And so I reverted back to my original cylinder, cleaned it up and, um, did some grinding on it and now it works. So this thing is fully functional locks. Um, it was a long road though to get to this point. So let's just jump right in right now. Enough talking. Let me show you how this went down. Okay, so obviously first we gotta start by disassembling the lock. This is the rod that holds the handle on the body. You can see the broken spring at the bottom of that rod. That is actually the reason why I started this whole process because the spring broke and the handle was just flopping. It wasn't returning. Uh, so that's the rusty old rod right there. And then here is the spring, which is all out of focus, but it's broken in two pieces. So the handle comes right out. And then the next thing to do is to get, um, this is actually the mechanism that holds the interior handle. So if you want to open it from the inside of the Airstream, that's going to allow that to happen. And then there's two pins that hold this rod or this uh, bolt in place. So this one knocks out pretty easily. The other one you have to uh, actually drill out. And I didn't, you didn't, you don't see it in the video because I think my kids showed up and uh, kind of got distracted. And what I ended up doing was just drilling it out, and then it slides right out, and you can get to that spring. And that spring was also broken. So once I took it out, it was so old and brittle, it just broke in half. So you can see here, these are all the parts. Right there, are the two springs on the left are the old ones, on the right are the new ones. And then I've got a new rod there on the right. And then I did buy a new cylinder, but it did not work out, so I ended up using the original cylinder. So now what I need to do is get everything cleaned up. There's a bunch of grease and just old grime and rust on all the parts. So I'm gonna go through, clean them all up with a Scotch-Brite pad, get all the grease off, run them through the wire wheel, um, polish them up, make them look nice and new. Now I'm not a locksmith, but the issue I had with this this original lock, and you, I, there's absolutely impossible to find a replacement for this. They have discontinued them. You can't order them. So without this, the lock is useless, and I haven't been able to find one that will work in its place. So we've got to make this work. This is the keys in it right now. So all these pins, I don't know what you call these. Like I said, I'm not a locksmith, but these should be down, flush with the barrel, so that it can rotate inside of this, the uh, opening. Um, when they're up, they lock in these little grooves and that's what locks it all up. And when they're down, it is able to spin in there. So they're not, when I put the key in, they all should go down flush with the barrel. Only the first one is actually doing it properly. There's five in here total. The three middle ones are sticking up way too much. And the back one, I actually just ground it down just now. And I'm, that's what I'm gonna do to all of these. I'm gonna grind about a th uh, maybe a heavy six, not even a sixteenth off of these um, to get them down a little bit. And I think it'll rotate in the cylinder and still lock um, without any issues. So let's take a few quick minutes to tell you about my good friends over at Policy Genius who are sponsoring this video. Now, we all know, unfortunately, that America is incredibly divided right now. It's really sad. I hate to see it happening. And it's hard to find common ground. But I can tell you one thing 
that we all have in common, we're all gonna pass away. We're all gonna die. I hate to say it, it's morbid, and it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. So with that in mind, if you have a family, you should seriously consider life insurance. I have it for myself, so if anything ever happens to me, I know that my wife and kids will be taken care of financially. And if you need life insurance, the best place to shop for it is at Policy Genius. Policy Genius is America's leading online insurance marketplace, and since 2014, they've helped over 100,000 families get insurance and place over 45 billion in coverage. They are very crafty at combining cutting edge tech with expert human help. Now it's the perfect time to shop for life insurance because in January, three of the major life insurance companies are dropping their prices. And with Policy Genius, you can compare all your quotes in one place and pick what's best for you. And you can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes on Policy Genius. Another great thing about Policy Genius is they negotiate with the insurance companies on your behalf. So you don't have to deal with any of that. They also handle all the paperwork, which I love that. I hate paperwork. So visit policygenius.com forward slash Andy Rawls to start shopping the marketplace. Remember, you can save up to $1,300 a year by using Policy Genius to compare quotes. Link is in the description. Go down and check them out. It helps support my channel, helps bring me more content to y'all when y'all support my sponsors. A huge thanks to Policy Genius for being such an awesome sponsor of the channel. Now let's move back on to this lock. Okay, so like I said, I just took a little bit off the top of those parts on the lock. I wish I knew the terminology and it worked out. So that, that rod that I just slid in there is what will actually lock the bolt. You, this little handle that I'm turning in, threading in, it's from the inside, so you can unlock and lock it from the inside. And then the lock, when it twists and it rotates, it throws that rod as well and locks it. Now that rod has a lot of slop in it, as you can tell. So they have these, this little tiny ball and spring that goes in this hole. So if you ever disassemble this lock, be very careful not to lose this, because uh, these are important. There's a set screw that goes in behind that spring. It pushes the ball against that rod, and then... Um, it, it allows it to catch. So when it's in the lock position, it'll catch, and when it's in the unlock, it'll catch. And you can notice that happening now. And so you'll see how it works here with the key. Just the rotating of that cylinder just drops and raises that pin, uh, and it works great. So all it took was me grinding a little bit off the top of those um, pins in the lock, and everything worked out. Now here's the part that challenged me really bad, is redrilling the holes for the new pin on the on the handle. This is the original pin that I have in there. I've set it to where the holes line up with the handle and I put a piece of cardboard and I'm marking the angle because it's really important that the angle be in the right place. And the only way you can do that is by drilling the pin holes properly through your handle into the rod. And I just struggled. This, this here uh, felt like a really good plan but did not work out. And the big reason is because that pin has some slop in there. And when you move it and try to drill it, you can see right here in the shot, the pin is not lined up to my line. And even the line of sight on the camera is off. So if we were dead on it, I think it would be even more off uh, from what you're seeing. So I'm already off to a bad start here. I'm drilling the angles wrong. I don't even realize it now in this at this point in the video. And you can start sensing my frustration here as I'm kind of realizing that this is probably not working very well. And my plan was to use the original holes there in the handle to start the holes in the rod and then pull it out and go to the drill press drill and finish it off, and uh, which worked okay, but it didn't matter because my angles, my holes were in the wrong position. So we're gonna find out that this hole is wrong. Uh, I'm gonna explain it here in a second. What I ended up doing is filling it and having to do it a second time. Okay, well, I got it on. Just drop the pin right there to just kind of grab it and it's wrong. I got the angle wrong. Um, you can see in the closed position, I mean, this is broken, so it doesn't really show anything, but if it was there, this would be bobbing it out and hitting right about there. As far as it could go, handle would still be in the open position. So the throw is wrong, and I don't, I honestly, I mean, you have to get this hole drilled at exactly the right angle. I thought I had it. I thought I was headed in the right direction. And apparently, no. Today, what I've done is I've taped it on to the handle, so when I rotate it, I can see kind of where it's going. So what happened yesterday is as I closed this handle, this was too far angled back that way and it was gonna hit there. So the handle would stay open about like that. And obviously we don't want that. So here we know we can leverage it all the way open. Now it won't go this far. It's probably only able to go to about right here and that'll open the door. Um, and then when you close it, it's not hitting at all on that back. So we know where I have it right now is exactly where it needs to be. Um, so what I'll do just like yesterday is I'm going to start and drill a new hole 
right there, then take it to the drill press and drill it completely out and then do the top hole. Okay, here we are. I'm really doing a bad job of filming this, mostly because I'm super frustrated with it. It handles on, um, not really, I just drilled a crate. I mean, the hole is really ugly. The pin, I got the pin in and it's working. I gotta do this side still. We're gonna have to put it all together to see where everything lands, to see how this works. But I think at least we're getting it done. I wouldn't say I'm super proud of it, but at least I'm getting it done. Okay, so with the handle finally on, I wanted to show you this part. Um, that is the original kind of washer or catch there that goes behind the spring. Now this is the new spring that is actually a bigger spring than the original. So that washer, you see how it just slipped actually inside the spring and under the lever arm. So it's not catching. So what I had to do is actually just make my own washer. Um, you can see here it's kind of like a teardrop shape washer and it uh, fits a little bit tighter around that rod and uh, it worked a lot better. I had my dad here to help me because this is really difficult to do okay. with two hands. You gotta hold the spring back and then put the uh, pin in, uh, to, which will hold that washer from obviously sliding forward under the pressure of the spring. And it's real, you gotta be real careful here that you don't go too far with the, the, the pin. It needs to be just under that, that arm that's gonna throw um, the rod. If you go too far, it actually hits on the casing um, down below. So here it is, finished and done and working. This is a great shot to show you how it all comes together, how it all works. Moment of truth. Nice. Oh. That's awesome. All right, so it's a little windy and cold, so I'm gonna try to make quick work of this here. Um, so one thing we did do, I had Jake. So if you remember Jake came by and eh, it was like four or five videos ago and repaired all the dents in these panels. Well, he came back and filled them and I pre-primed them and look, just look how beautiful and smooth these are. These were just torn up and all beat up and now they're back to new. So he did both sides. He basically came out with filler, filled them for me, made them nice and smooth and then came back and blocked them off, sanded them and then I reprimed them. Uh, so the two fronts, he worked on those. Uh, and then the back, we still have some work to do back there. Uh, he hopefully will be back soon to do the, knock those out for me. He's been a huge help. I'm really thankful for him. I'll, I'll link his company in the description. He's super talented. Got to do this back quarter, back panel, this back panel. And then if you remember, um, this had a huge hole in it. We fiberglassed it. So we got to do some filling there and kind of smooth that out. Same down here, some pretty bad damage here. Once that's done, this thing's ready to paint. So hopefully early February, we'll put paint on it and I'll get new wheels on it. We'll put all the trim back on and the exterior will be done. Also, my dad and I installed some new lights. Um, I left these end caps off, which you can see up there. So we could wire in a few last minute things and this is one of those. So we wired these in. These are wireless, but they do require power from the marker lights. So um, those are up and running, um, basically, you'll have a blind spot, three cameras, one on each side, and then 
you have a rear camera for your backup and you know you can see if, who's behind you back there up there so pretty cool system haven't had a chance to really play with it much let's go inside where it's nice and warm gotta tell you that's pretty awesome makes me really happy Ugh. all right close this off man it feels much better in here a little bit warmer so sorry i have allergies and cold weather i hate cold i like it to be hot the front bench, I'll give you a quick look at that. Uh, it's still still finishing that up. There's gonna be a build video now. Also, we hooked up the fresh water tank. So this, all the water lines and everything is ready to go. I could fill it with water in the tank or we can hook it up to city water. Um, the next step is the drain lines, obviously. Um, the toilet is in. So we got a toilet now that came from E-Trailer. This is Dometic toilet. I'll link this in the description. Pretty sweet little toilet. I never thought E-Trailer would have sold toilets, but there they, there they are. Appreciate it, E-Trailer. So the reason I went ahead and installed this is so that I would know where to put my wall. So it's gonna be a wall right here. So you're gonna have a tight little space in here where maybe we're gonna have a, probably gonna have a TV mounted on that wall. Um, and that wall comes right up and should hit right where these wires are. It's gonna be really close. And then, you know, this wire is a switch uh, for lights and then this is your plug for your TV. So that'll be the next thing I do is install this wall. And then obviously there's a long wall to about here and then we come over here and that's our bathroom our bathroom ends about right in this area so you'll have a door you walk in right here sink toilet shower that that's the next big step and that's like I said that's why the toilets there uh, I'll start building out the walls and once the bathrooms done the fridge cabinet Okay, so that's that. Uh, next thing we're gonna do, next video will probably be this bathroom build. Uh, I've gotta jump on that and tackle that. I am absolutely over the top busy in the shop. I have all of 2021 pretty much booked out on furniture orders. It's getting overwhelming to manage it all as one person. So uh, I think it's about time I find someone to help me. I, it's just a matter of finding the right person. I know they're out there. I've gotta find someone who is willing to tackle jobs like this, possibly be able to use a camera and edit video. I know they're out there somewhere. I just got to find them. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned. This thing is still happening. Just a little bit slower than usual. And big thanks. And a thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring the video. If it wasn't for the sponsors, this stuff would never get done. So go check them out. Help support the channel. And we'll see you next time.